Thank you for coming back after our short break. Uh, we would like to continue our presentations with Mr. Albert presenting Flatpak and KDE. Take it away. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm going to present myself. So, who am I? So, I, I do lots of things because I'm a very old KDE person, right? I started doing things in 2003, so I've done uh, some flat hub recently work, but I've been doing work on Ocular. I, I used to write KPDF, but then KPDF got so old that people don't know what KPDF is anymore, so I, I just do Ocular. Been doing things with translations and releases and games. I was one of, one of the founding members of KDE Spain. I was on the board of the KDE V for a while. So yeah, I, I've been doing uh, a little bit of everything. Since you see on the first line, I've been a KDE developer since 2003. You know what day it's today? Today is my, it's my KDE birthday, so thank you for coming for my celebration. Uh, <laughs> it just so happens that it was today, right? It was, my account was created on the 15th of July of the 2003. Anyhow, back to the topic. What is Flatpak? I'm going to show some slides now. The top of the slides has this thing between quotes. The thing between quotes uh, is because I've copied it from, right? So I'm, I'm going to try to, like, go through what they say, and I will give my interpretation of what that means, right? You might agree or not. They might agree or not. But this is all my fault if you don't agree. So uh, the, the web page says that is the future of apps on Linux, which is, I think it's a bit too much. It's a good goal, right? Like, you, if, you, if you set your expectations to be too low, you never get there, right? So like, set them very high, and if you get in the middle, that's not too bad. My interpretation of what Flatpak is, is a way of helping the user by helping the developer. The developer, as like Ocular developer, I have this problem. Everything is red, right? This is repologies.org, and very, 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 very few distributions ship the last version of Ocular, right? I mean, this is a bit trickier also because we just released the point three, so there might be some point two there, which is not too bad. But generally, I say that probably more than 50% of our users are using old stuff, right? Which is not great because they will file a bug and you will say it's fixed and it's like, oh, but it's not fixed for me. So yeah, this is not great, right? So what that's what Flatpak aims to fix. To fix a way that when I do a release, the user gets the release as soon as possible and I can tell them the bug is fixed and they are happy because the bug is fixed. Now, some of the quotes from the web page. So it says, it's, it's built for every distro and stable performance and blah, 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 right? So it's built for every distro because at the end of the day, it's its own distro, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you cheat by putting another layer in the middle and it's like, yeah, it works everywhere because you have your own layer. There's a thing called runtime, which is very similar to what Scarlett was speaking before about the content thingies, I think it's called content something, in Snap, which is basically a set of libraries that everybody wants to use. So if everybody wants to use it, well, just let's compile it once and, and depend on that. Right. So there's one called the free desktop platform, which has like base libraries. We have one called the KD platform, and then there's the GNOME platform, and there's more, right? It, it, everybody can do their own platform. You don't have to be special to do a platform. It's just another kind of flat pack. Now, pack has this very nice and at the same time very not nice thing that it runs containerized. Your application immediately doesn't have access to Dbus, or it doesn't have immediately access to all the files on the file system and, and whatnot. And this is very nice because it's the way that modern things should work, right? One application should not have access to randomly all your hard disk. It's, it's not very nice because we're not used to that, right? We've been writing desktop Linux applications for 30 years, and we are used to like poke everywhere. It's like, I'm gonna get this from here, here. So like, for example, in, in Ocular, there's this thing that you can render LaTeX annotations kind of thing. So you write some LaTeX and it will run LaTeX and it will convert it to a PNG and put it on the PDF file. 
Well, that, that, that only works because you have LaTeX installed on your system. So to make that work properly on, on the Flatpak version, we would have to compile LaTeX inside Ocular. So we're not doing that, right? Uh, there's other ways to do that. And there's like plugins in the, in kind of a sense, in Flatpak. But by making things better, sometimes make things harder for the developer. So yeah. Then to help a bit with that, there's a thing called portals, which it's also working on, on Snap, as far as I understand, that they are a way for your application to, to punch out in an organized manner outside of your, of your confinement. To so say, I want to print, or I want to open a file, or I want to know what's the network status. Right? This is a very typical thing your application wants to do. But in the current world, we just go and do QDBus Network Manager. But if you do that, you suddenly have access to like disconnecting the Wi-Fi and, and things like that. And, and you don't want K-Mail to disconnect your Wi-Fi. You want to know if you're connected or not to be able to like offer syncing your email or not. But why would K-Mail have access to disconnecting your Wi-Fi, right? So that's something that the portals are helping. And it's a bit, I think it's a bit similar to what's happening with Wayland. People are discovering more and more things that compositors need to do, and they're adding more and more protocols. And with portals, it's a bit of the same thing. People are discovering more and more things that make sense for applications to do in a containerized way. So there's like more portals being created every time. You can find the portal reference in that URL. Luckily, some of the portals you don't have to care about. So if you want to open a file, either Qt or, or the KD frameworks will care about for you. Like There will be an if in the code and say, OK, if I'm inside the flat pack, do this thing. And, and you don't have to care about the portals. Some other things you might need to code yourself. It's not super hard to do. But again, it's more work. right? Now, another thing they say is distribution made easy. I mean, sure, uh, it's made easy because you only have to care for one platform, right? So you only have to care for that one pl flat pack in particular. So yeah, you only build one binary, and that binary kind of works everywhere. There's a concept of repositories, or remotes, I think they call it, on, on flat pack slang. So yeah, these are the ones I had on my computer when I checked the other day. So I have like the FlatHub one. We have one which is KD applications. And then I had two ones which are for testing, right? I was testing Katomic and, and Chococ. So I had th those two ones as, as testing. But basically, you can have as many repositories. And it just works fine. I mean, it's, it's not nothing groundbreaking, right? I mean, this has been invented for a while, but it works. Now, in Flatpak, you as the Flatpacker, which ideally should be develop the developer, it's not always the developer, right? <laughs> the idea of Flatpak is let's kill the, the, the distribution maintainer, right? But we, we just not killed the distribution maintainer because distributions still exist. We've just created a new figure, which is the Flatpak maintainer, right? Ideally, it should have been the developer, but it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened yet. But basically, what this means is that you get to specify all the dependencies you're using. Right? So for example, and then it has easy to build tools. Yeah, I mean, nowadays everything is easy to build. Right? There's, there's a make, there's an install, and, and it's not so hard. So in Flatpak, depend, like, the, how your application is built is controlled by a JSON file. You can also do YAML, but we have decided to mostly do JSONs in, in KD land. And these would be the basic things your JSON would have, right? So it would have an ID. So that's the ID you would use to install from the command line if you want, right? So you do flatpak install org.kd.kgeography. Then there's a runtime, which can be null or not, right? But it's the thing you base your thing on. So kgeography uses the KDE frameworks, so it uses that. There's a command, which is what has to be run. And then basically, it's a URL and the shop. And I mean, I, I removed some of the brackets because it didn't fit here. But that's basically what the KGeography flat pack manifest is. It's like five lines of boilerplate, right? So 
in an ideal world, it's very easy to do that, right? Sadly, not everything is so easy, right? We have contact, which is almost 1,500 lines long, and we have ocular, which is 500 uh, lines long, right? And, and that's because of the dependencies you have, right? These applications are big applications, and they have lots of dependencies, so basically you have to spell out all your dependencies. You have to say, Ocular uses Poplar, but not only that, right? Poplar uses libLCMS, so it, it, you need to spell out libCMS. And if libLCMS uses something else, else that is not on the, on the platform, you need to compile that down, right? So that's not so great, but at least it gives you the power of deciding which libraries to use and which versions and, and whatnot. Now, uh, since we are speaking about dependencies, I'm going to cheat a bit, and I'm going to talk about a fast aligning talk I've been presenting to Academy for two years and hasn't been approved in either of the two years, so I'm just going to do here, which is say no to optional dependencies. Right? Optional dependencies are a pain in the ass because they explode your complexity. Right? This is the example I want to speak about. So Ocular has 18 Ocular optional dependencies. One of them is popular which has six optional dependencies. One of them is LCMS, which has five optional dependencies. And I got tired of checking if one of those had optional dependencies or not. But I'm not super good with math, but I'm sure if you multiply that, that's a big number of possibilities that explode. Right? I, I actually remember talking to Nate when we were doing the, the, the signature thing in, in PDF in Ocular. And he was saying, he's like, this doesn't work. Like, it, this doesn't show up for me. And it's like, well, because one of the missing dependencies somewhere was missing, right? And it's optional, so we didn't fail. So my suggestion would be every time you have an, a dependency, make it non-optional, make it mandatory. And if you want, you can provide a CMake parameter or whatever to disable it, right? But make the user be aware that they are disabling it. And, and that goes very well with actually this talk, right? Because imagine contact has 67 dependencies, right? Imagine they, are, they add a 68 dependency, but it's optional, right? So when we go and update from contact 2304 to 2308, we're not going to realize. Like, the, the, the build block of contact is like several thousands of lines. So we're not going to realize that we missed an optional dependency, right? So if it's not optional, we will realize, because the build will fail, and then we will be able to decide, well, should it be optional? Should it be not optional? Maybe it doesn't make sense in the Flatpak world, so we can just remove it, right? So yeah, that was my lightning talk that I cheated uh, to talk about. So I've been talking about Flatpak. Then there's this other thing called FlatHub. And what is it? So FlatHub, it's basically a remote, right? So it's basically a repository of packages, but it also has more, right? So it also has its own CI. It's mainly hosted in GitHub. We'll see an example later of some things that are not hosted in GitHub. And to my very own sadness, it has its own extra rules of what they think it's a valid package or not. So. We will run things on our CI, it, everything will be happy, you will compile it locally in your machine, everything will be fine, and then you will put it on FlatHub and they will comply because your, this, your description ends with a dot. Your description cannot end with a dot because dots are very bad. Yes, maybe it makes sense, dots are terrible, but should it mm, forbid me from updating my package? Maybe not, right? But, I don't know, it's, it's their thing and they, they do it, so. And if you don't like it, you do your own thing, right? So some statistics of, of KD in, in FlatHub. We have, if I didn't miscount, because by being hosted in GitHub, GitHub is not that good. Like, it's, it's not very easy to find things. So there's 147 applications on the KD group, which basically means they come from invent.kd.org. I put Firefox there as, a, as an example, right? So Firefox, I think it's the more the application on FlatHub that has more installs. They have 3 million installs. 
the one I could find that has more installs from our side is KDN Live, which has almost 600,000. Ocular had around 200,000, and K Geography, for, for a given example, has 10,000, which is, I mean, it's not a lot, but it's not too bad, right? So, as you saw before, right, we had the, somewhere? Yeah, we have the KD platform, right? So, what's the KD platform, where it's hosted, how you can contribute to it, right? So, the, the KD platform slash runtime is hosted at invent.kd.org, but weirdly is built by the FlatHub CI over FlatHub, right? So it's one of these things like everything in FlatHub is hosted in GitHub, except ours for some reason. I, don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I guess people know more why it happened in the beginning, but uh, that it is how it is. So we have one branch per Qt version, right? So we have like the platform based on uh, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15. There's a star because 5.15 has been on for so long that we have like four platforms for 5.15 because they've been upgrading the free desktop SDK one, so we, we've been rebasing ours, so we have like 5.15 normal, 5.15.21, and 5.15.22, I think. And then we also do have Qt6 branches because there is no Qt platform, right? Like, the Qt platform is the KD platform, right? So if you want to do a, a pure Qt application, you just use our platform, and if you don't use frameworks, that's fine, and if you use them, that's also fine, right? So we have, like, 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, and 6.5, but they do not include frameworks yet because, I mean, it, they're not released, right? So it kind of would, would be weird to, to ship frameworks there. The updates to those files in, in that invent thing is manual, right? Manual to a degree that you can do set, basically, right? Because what they do is, like, build this stack, right? So you can go and say, okay, instead of building 508, build 509 now, right? So you do set, whatever do you do in set. I don't know set, but you do that. Then we have the manifests for each of the 147 applications I mentioned, right? Those are hosted in uh, GitHub, and each of them has its own repository, right? So you would find hub.com, flathub, or kd.ocular, or kd.contact, or kd.kwrite, or kd.kdenlive, and, and all that. They are also built on flathub CI, and we only have one branch for them, which is the latest stable version. That's what the user wants. The user wants to be using uh, 2304.3. There's no reason for a user not to be wanting to use that. Updates are automatic, and by automatic, I mean for each of our dependencies, we have like a rule that tells it how to realize if there's a new release or not, and when that happens, a merge request is done against the repository. It's just a merge request. Like, I, an actual human has to go there and say, merge it. But it's, it's, it's okay, right? It helps a lot because, you know, when we do a new KD gear release, suddenly there's 100 packages that need updating. So if instead of creating 100 merge requests, you only have to press OK 100 times in each of the merge requests, that's a huge improvement. Now, since things couldn't be simpler because we like to complicate things, we also have a flat pack repository on KDE. But it's a bit different from the flat hub one, right? So this one is nightlies. So this one is building master. It's hosted at Invent. It's built by the binary factory. I, I think all these things are going to change at some point because we are, I think we want to kill the binary factory. So I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, this might be obsolete in a month. But at this point, this is the correct information. Updates are not automatic which is not too bad because since we're building master, well, master is, I mean, master is automatic every time you build it. So maybe some, some only of some of the dependencies are not automatic, but for our software, it's not too bad. Sadly, that means that the files have to be duplicated from FlatHub because 
if you check here what we had in KGeography, we had a URL that was the URL to build KGeography. So for the night list, that URL is the Git URL. So it, it cannot be shared. I mean, I guess we could share it with some fancy magic, but at this point, it's not shared. Right. So we have some duplication going there, which is not great. Now, another thing you can do, there's not many projects that have done it, but it's been d done more and more, is enable Flatpak on the invent CI, right? So in, on invent k.org, we have CI that runs on every commit and on every merge and blah, blah, blah. You can enable that by using one of the templates. If, you've, if you know how the AI works for KDE repo repositories on, on GitHub, we don't spell everything out manually. We just like, reuse some of the templates and, and all the magic happens behind the scenes. So you add one line to your GitLab CI, you name your manifest, Flatpak manifest, and then on every single commit, the, the Flatpak will be built. Obviously, it still has the same problems that we are duplicating the file from hat, FlatHub. The updates are not automatic at all either. They, they, you have, they, they are there in GitHub, sorry, in, in, in Bend, and there's not much to do. If you do that and you had previously a Flatpak in here, please go here and change it to what's called a remote app, which is a way to say, build this thing, but the instructions are not here, the instructions are somewhere else. Because if you don't do that, instead of having it duplicated two times, we will have duplicated three times, right? And that's something we really don't want to do. It's bad enough that we have it duplicated two times. And that's basically everything I had to talk about. I think I've been a bit fast, so if you have questions. If you have questions, I will try to answer them. And if not, we can go early to the coffee break. There's no questions. I've been so good that no. Oh, well, there's a question from Nate, maybe. Hello. So on the subject of the manifest duplication, I recall hearing at some point about a plan to either build apps on our infrastructure and then push to FlatHub or to share manifest files somehow. Would you be able to talk a little bit about any, any news there or how that would work or anything like that? Yeah, so yes, I think that's the plan. No, I cannot talk about that because I, I, I'm not very much involved in that. I know uh, Timote and Ben are trying to work on that. But so that would be uh, something similar. I mean, not something similar, but I, I was, well, anyhow. For the platform, I can't find it anymore. Here, for the platform, we are hosting it ourselves. FlatHub is building it, and then they are publishing it. The idea, as you say, is that we would host it, we will, we will build it, and then we will push it over to the site. I think there's some things that need to be worked out for that to happen, right? How do you allow us to push and not everyone else, and blah, blah, blah. So that's still not finished. But yeah, I think that might work. We might still end up with a duplication because of the problem of we want master to be master and we want stable to be stable. And uh, I want master to prob probably build with popular master, but I want stable to build with popular 2307. So I I'm not sure if that would really solve the duplication totally. It would at least solve it that it wouldn't be on two different places, which is a good thing. We would need to find a way for, for the dependency things to, to solve. It sounds like that would mostly be better. I was thinking about the master versus branch topic before. I think because Flatpak files can import other ones, maybe most of the code could be in a shared one, and then a tiny little separate thing could actually specify the branch or something like that. I, I'm, that would be nice, but it being JSON, I'm not sure if you can, like, because you would need to import the popular manifest and then replace something inside, which is the version that you want to build. I'm not an expert. I'm not sure if that's doable. It, it probably can be do done with some tooling. Sounds like we need templatized manifest files. Yep. <laughs> Good project idea for anybody here. Uh, just for it, 
Templatizing, we actually have Qt Web Engine as a template, and applications building uh, or including Qt Web Engine, they do not specify a uh, runtime they use, but they specify the template they use. So they specify they use uh, Qt Web Engine template, which uh, specifies the runtime it uses, and that way uh, we can have like a some base template for KD applications and built on top of that. Okay, so that's kind of solved for Web Engine, right? It can be reused for something else. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. So, uh, a bit more of a generic uh, question about flat uh, about Flatpak. Uh, if I got this correctly, uh, the libraries are being packaged as a runtime in. Uh, which is then used by the by the application that's being packaged. Does does Flat have a, have a way to know when I, when I install an application that happens to share the libraries with another one to use the runtime that's already installed and only if they're not in, if the runtime is not installed then okay. Yeah. So the question was about reusing runtimes, right? So here, I mean, I. I I didn't have enough space to put everything right, but, but so we're saying this is using the org platform, and then we would say it, it's using the version 5.15-22.8, right? So when you install, when you do flatpak install org geography, if you don't have anything in your system installed, it will tell you, I have to install this thing first, and you say yes, and then it, it will install the, the, the runtime, and uh, it will install KD geography. And then you go and do flatpak install org.kd.ocular, and it will go and say, oh, it has to use the runtime, but you already have installed, so that's good. Uh, I don't have to install the runtime, and it will only install ocular. So the, the sharing is done by default. It, it's, it's actually very nice because once you have the platform installed, the applications are super tiny. Like you go and install kgeography, and maybe it's like half a megabyte or less, right? Because like. Everything else is on your system already, like the icons and, and the libraries and all the things that are big are there, and then you only need the, the binary and the translations, and, and that's it. Have you tried using the open build service to build flatpacks? I have not. I have not. I, I know it works, but the, like, the easy way, my main aim is to be on a flat hub, which is it's the biggest flat pack repository, and it's very easy to use their CI for that. So I haven't had the need to investigate other different build systems. Thanks. You mentioned that some of the portals are currently, or currently have to be done by the application themselves. Is there a good reason why we cannot move that into KDE frameworks or Qt itself? So the question was why, if there's some portals that I was speaking with Portal somewhere. Uh, port Anyhow, I don't know what portals are. Blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, I will skip to the end. You say, like, ones that sh are done by uh, the application, could we move that to Qt or not? Sure. I think there's some portals that don't really have an abstraction in Qt, for example, right? I think there was one, it's a weird one, right? But it, it enables putting your computer on gaming mode. I don't know what it does, but I guess it increases the CPU or whatever and makes sure that something doesn't happen. There's no, there's no Q gaming mode class in Ocular, in, in Qt that you can use, right? We could create new classes, but then it would be super weird because what does Q gaming mode do on Windows, right? Maybe there's not something that has a parallel, right? So I think all the ones that make sense kind of have either portal support in, in Qt or, or KD frameworks. There's some ones that you would need to make something so specific that you might as well just do it on the application. At the end of the day, it's doing like two DBAS calls, right? So it's not a lot of work on the application side. I think that should be it. That okay. concludes our session for now. Cool. Everyone can head out uh, for a break right now. Thank you. Thank you.